these are the last news in our last video, so catch them right here, right now. Greetings petrolheads and welcome to VromRom.net, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to our regular news roundup. Welcome to the channel, thanks for stopping by, my name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. When time permits, please consider subscribing. If you have any news for us, send us a mail to news at VromRom.net. Cardcraft can now be raced on multiplayer, while it is only in beta at the moment, we'll give the team a pass and say they fulfilled their promise to have multiplayer included before the end of the year. And yes, it is because we like the sim. And because the team doesn't try any legal shenanigans against those who criticize them, unlike other companies have done against other people. More good news include Alessandro Zanardi leaving the hospital and continuing his recovery process at home. He seems to be far away from being completely recovered, but it's an important step. Our thoughts are with him and his family. Zanardi's will to fight and his life history are always a continuous inspiration for all of us at Romrom. And yes, this will be the last news and the last video of this year. We're taking a small breather to collect ideas, maybe get ahead with some of the scripts and videos and overall enjoy the holidays like normal people do. Not that we consider ourselves normal, we're too wacky for that, but we're gonna try to be for once and see how it feels. We haven't heard from Drift21 in a long time, but apparently development continues as the game is sporting a new car. The iconic and famous Toyota Corolla AE86 is now part of the roster of cars you can drift around, upgrade in your garage and overall enjoy on the different tracks. That's not the only new car though, as the 1985 Toyota Sprinter Trueno GT comes also into the game. Not as iconic as the AE86, but surely also good fun and a blast from the past. Of course, also with upgrade parts in the garage, liveries and presets, and with special garage challenges. Also, you'll find 25 new track challenges in the game, some rebalance of the already existing challenges and some other assorted changes. The link to the complete list of changes is as always in the description of this video. On the 12th day of Christmas my lover gave to me a race room hotfix and another one and another one and another another one. Yes, yeah, so while Sector 3 considered this update a small update, we are at hotfix 3 or 4 of what seems to be an endless stream of race room hotfixes. Something went utterly wrong here. With replays crashing the sim, servers not really working well and some other assorted mismatches. While we have heard some theories about what happened, we'd rather not speak about them without even an inkling of a confirmation. Needless to say, we wonder what happened in QA, which is the most important part of software development as they are the last line of defense. On the day of the hotfix, the race from servers were offline for at least half of the day and even after those were up and running, the amount of issues the update brought with it piled up, especially if you look in their forum. So what was supposed to be in the small update? Some not further disclosed preparation for upcoming content releases and competitions, better performance of the web overlays, being able to see display settings when in VR and forcing VR to restart if the resolution was changed in the menus. Also, the AI got better in rolling starts and making it realize they were not running out of energy when driving electric engines. That is, unless they really are. And also, they now choose the correct engine power map when changing sessions. Different camera settings got corrected or changed and you won't be able to change cars using the plus and minus signs in the number pad anymore. 
it's also been an update with a lot of spark as the spark emitters were added to the DTM cars of 2003 and 2005 as well as to the Audi TT Cup cars, the Audi TT RS VLN, the GT4s and the BMW M235i. And pardon the weak pun. Tons of small changes in different car series, including disallowing the use of mixed tire compounds in the Formula Race Room US and X17. As always, we've linked the change log in the description of the video so you can check out all the details which also include a lot of small fixes to many tracks, especially in the way the AI handles those. If you ever wanted to test yourself on a desert rally, Saber Interactive, the company behind SnowRunner, will invite you to do so in what seems is going to be a simcade that will allow you to drive motorcycles, cars, trucks, quads and SSVs alone or in multiplayer. These races will take place in licensed stages from the official 2020 and 2021 Dakar Rally. Added to those, it seems to be planned to have an open world section, dynamic seasons and weather as well as 24 hour cycles. And yes, that includes sandstorms and mud. And you will even be able to rescue and tow other cars for extra repair points which you will most assuredly need if this Dakar game is nearly similar to the rally. Other than next year, no date has been given for the game to be released and while the above features are talked about, we can never be sure they will be there on release. And we'll see if they will deliver the game for PlayStation 5 and 4, X4 Series XS, Xbox One and PC at the same time, but that seems to be the plan. Whoa! iRacing went and bought Orontes Games, makers of drag, wow! Well, the news is less wow-worthy when you realize that Orontes Games is two people who seem to be brothers, making a game that has been in early access since 2020. It's nice looking, you have to give them that. So, what iRacing have done is buy out a small company so as to get two developers knowledgeable in good looking racing games, which is fine in our book. I personally have been part of such small companies being bought up for good money. But from the iRacing press release you would think it's an acquisition of similar proportions to EA buying out Codemasters, which this certainly is not. Oh well, leave it to marketing to blow out stuff like this to bullshit proportions. I suppose they have to rationalize their budget lest it gets rationed. See what I did there? Anyway, iRacing has two new developers and an over-eager marketing department. Thanks to the wonderful Just Posted, we're offering you daily races on Automobilista 2 at the moment and by popular vote in our Discord and community posts with F3s in the Glen, but the plan is to change those each week. Catch them every day at 2000 CET, either through Just Race or search for the server RomRom in Automobilista 2. And yes, if these races take off, we plan to expand the daily races to other sims, so keep an eye on our Discord as well as our community posts. Have fun and all praise to just post it. If you like this video and would like to see more, consider becoming a patron, thus letting us spread our wings. And a big thank you to our first two patrons. You may have seen it in our video last Thursday, see the link up there. The new car is a quite US American looking sedan called the Brockle Bastion with many different versions including a drag car, an off-road version, a police car and many more. You can read all the details following the link in our description. Also the Civetta Bolide has been, as the devs put it, remastered with up updated graphics and damage models. Its variants have also multiplied a lot. And while we are talking about remasters, the ETK Driving Center has also seen a remaster. 
with better lighting, improved graphics, nightlights and whatnot, as have been the industrial center and Hirochi. The ETK and many other tracks have gotten a PBR update, which means improved graphics and graphic effects. Also new with these updates are delivery missions to Drift Missions, a Gymkhana mission and a huge Drag Race mission. And if you like missions, we have one for you. Collect all videos in our channel by checking the playlist to the left or the video to the right. Until next time, save fuel, collect pickup and we'll see each other on the podium.